This film is dazzling. Five stars. I can't believe that this film does exactly what it says on the tin. Wow. Film good. I like. Slow down, film. Can't we just chill? Movie poster quotes. What a weird art they are. Eye-catching and usually filled with some sort of horrific pun which I can't help but admire, and often more laden with star power than a porno starring myself and Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yet, you know it's all bullshit, right? That these quotes are about as valuable as a glass of water in Atlantis. Well, if you didn't, take a seat and let me spit some hot white noise at you. With this in mind, I'm JulesWhatCulture.com, and these are seven devious ways that movie posters trick you into seeing terrible films. Number seven, they'll quote anything. The practice of quoting reviews on posters comes with an obvious drawback. Quotes only become available once the film has been released and the critics have had their actual say. This is naturally a pain for studios as it does nothing to help grow the hype ahead of release, which is why they go through all the pre-release coverage of their film and pick whatever statement suits. As most on-set features tend to be written on the optimistic side of things to keep those studio press relations lovey-dovey, there's plenty to choose from. For example, when The Expendables hit in 2010, it came adorned with a glowing praise from Empire, the most awesome action cast ever assembled, which is pretty high praise from such a major publication. That is, until you realise it's a quote from an article they featured in the magazine months before its release. Shady tactics. Number 6. They make bold claims with no source. If a distributor can't find a pre-release article that gives you a positive view on your film in 10 words or fewer, things can get a bit desperate, or more rather, more creative. Few people actually check the validity of claims made on the posters or DVD covers, so why not say whatever the hell you want? A good example of this is with Grown Ups, whose DVD shipped with five stars and I quote, laugh out loud comedy plastered on the back. There were no references for this rating or claims suggesting that Columbia just plucked them out of thin air, which makes even more sense when you realise the quote was applied to Grown Ups, a film with all the comedy watching your wife burn at the stake. It's a common little trick for an uncredited five star rating to be directly below a genuine quote, therefore it looks like the same critic gave a full score when they didn't. Hell, even Disney did this with the universally adored Frozen. In a trailer that came out a month before its Thanksgiving release, the studio called it the greatest animated Disney event since The Lion King. Now, whether you agree with that or not is down to you, but it's all very misleading. Number 5. Heavy Use of Ellipsis the ellipsis is a quota's best friend, allowing vast swathes of text to be cut down to just the key points. But it rears its ugly head in the boosting of a bad film by allowing questionable film reviews to become glowing endorsements with just a few simple cuts. I mean, just say that a reviewer praises the film's acting in one paragraph and then disses the script in the next before commending the fight scenes, you've suddenly got the ready-made poster quote, superb acting, dot 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 great action. This is distributors working at their most underhanded. They're not twisting the truth directly, I mean, the critic did praise these elements, but in presenting only select good elements, they create the illusion of an overall positive critical appraise. The thing is, as annoying as it is to see, it's not technically lying, so this is actually one of the best methods of deceit. Number 4. Critics lie just to get quoted. Right, so now we've seen the lengths that the studios will go to get their film a veneer of quality, but it's also worth remembering that movie poster quotes work both ways. If a critic's name ends up on the one sheet, they're guaranteed a big ego boost and higher profile, which naturally draws people who will forsake their integrity in place of their name being mixed in with an inferior film's marketing. Any film that begins with an of the year quote is likely baiting this, particularly if it comes just before December, i.e. the actual end of the year. This hit its height of silliness when Jonathan Ross, one of the BBC's best institutions, was quoted on the box of Batman Forever, calling it one of the greatest movies ever made. Now, that doesn't seem too bad, right? I mean, he's entitled to his opinion. I mean, the film wasn't very good, but it was, it was okay. Well, it turns out that he'd only said this to win a bet with his brother to see who could get a quote published on a film first. He just levied his reputation and made up a positive quote to win a bet. It makes you wonder if I could trade my modicum of YouTube life for anything. I mean, f*** it, if you've got something to shill, then give me a bell. I could use more hats. Number 3. They present sarcasm literally. At what point does it matter what a quote on the poster says? If it's being used by a distributor to sell their product, it has to be positive, right? I mean, that's the logical thinking here, but if you can't find praise, then why not try and extract it from extreme criticism? The Most Fertile Man in Ireland, a film so minor that it doesn't even have its own Wikipedia page. 
Seriously, it came and went with nary a notice back in 2001, and its only claim to fame is the way that distributor Samson Films twisted a scathing review by Mark Commode into positive publicity. The DVD, which is now out of distribution for some reason, came adorned with a shiny endorsement from Britain's most trusted critic, who was credited on the box as saying it was as funny as the title suggests. Now, the more astute of you will have noticed the little logic gap with this. Giving the film an absolute panning in the Observer, Commode's throwaway comment has been twisted, probably because it was the least awful review that Samson could actually find. Number two, they quote anyone who says something remotely positive. When a movie comes out adorned with a collection of four or five stars, you should probably take a look at the sources before rushing off to see it. Now, if you know the names or trust the critics, then great, you're probably on to a winner. However, if you're looking at what appears to be YouTube usernames like moviehack.net or Russian man love the film XX65, then you should probably really start to ask questions. Straight to horror video is rife with this sort of thing. The Human Centipede poster, for example, mixed in mainstream critics and some basically unheard of websites to boost itself. It's so prevalent here that it's actually been parodied in the most lowbrow of ways. If it looks like a quote from an internet forum or 4chan thread, then chances are it probably is. And number one, they completely make up critics. There have been some absolute luminaries in the film critic world. Roger Ebert, Mark Commode, David Manning. Wait, who? David Manning, oh Dave you cheeky little shit talk, is not a real person. He's a creation of Columbia from the summer of 2001. Allegedly writing for the Ridgefield Press, Manning gave glowing reviews to a ton of Columbia films, even calling The Animal, which is the Rob Schneider tumor, a winner. It got so bad that when this was eventually exposed, Sony, who owns Columbia, had to pay out $1.5 million in refunds to people who were duped by this hoax hack. However, it's not all happy news, because that 1.5 mil is but a fraction of what Manning helped rake in for Sony. Curse you, Manning! Curse you and your goddamn Ridgefield Press bullshit! And that's our list. Got any other ways that movie posters lie to you? Well, let me know about it in the comments section below. Then why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. <laughs> oh, wasn't that something? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe below. And also, the people who made this lovely video, they're appearing right here. But if you're thinking to yourself, I want to see more content, Jules, then why not look above my head? As there probably is some. I don't know. I can't see it. Until next time.